All right, so we're gonna repair this couch. Um, it's hurting. As you can hear it, couch is only a couple years old. We had a couple of kids jumping on it and things like that, beating it up. So I'll just go through the process. I've flipped this up and first things first, we gotta take out all these staples that you can see here here, 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 here. We want to get this felt off. We got a little tear in it right here. Um, and it's got some wear to it, but that's pretty normal for these. Just put some tape on them or something. Uh, black duct tape is what I usually use. It holds up pretty good. And then we go from there. Um, we will also need to take these off, but these just spin off like so. Sorry for the shaky video, all I've got on me is my cell phone right now, so, yes, you have to spin it for a long time to get it to come off, but they're almost always just a little stud like that, so, anyway, alright, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling all these out, and uh, I'll continue this here in just a minute, really quickly. I suggest pulling these out with wire cutters or people call them dikes and other things like that but you tend to be able to grab hold of the staple really good and pull just like that we'll pull all these out as you see they're pretty long staples so you'll want to they're not very thick staples by any means but they are kind of long so you want to get a staple similar to that when you go to replace them you will need a staple gun here so Start pulling these out one by one. Having trouble getting it out, you got two options. You can use a screwdriver to try to get up underneath there. God dang, this is not focusing. There we go. You can use a screwdriver to get up underneath there, like so. And this one's really deep, so it doesn't look like it's going to want to come out even with the screwdriver. If the screwdriver doesn't work, the other option you can use is a razor blade and get the point of it right in there but be careful not to cut the couch fabric <laughs> that would be bad so you want to just get that right up underneath there and just turn it and pry it so let me see if i can get that to happen real quick you may break the tip off of the razor blade but that's why it's a replaceable blade and actually, it would probably help in this case if it did not have a sharp tip. Because it would keep you, from, keep you from digging into the fabric so much. Pulling these out. I accidentally, as you can see right there, I cut it. I cut it through on accident with the pair of wire cutters. If that happens, just grab each side. And just pull it out. Okay, that. You want to just get a grip on it and then just wedge it. See? It comes right out. They're easy to pull out once you get a grip. Just don't grab too tight or you'll cut them like I just did. And then you got to pull out both pieces. So. Just be gentle and take your time. You don't want to tear up the fabric on the bottom. It doesn't stretch that well, so. So as you start going around here, you may see loose nails and things like that, that the manufacturer was too preoccupied to <clears throat> clear up or take off. Um, they will turn into a hole in your hand when you try to pick up the couch at some point, I'm sure. So while you're down here, clip these off with the with the wire clippers you'll thank yourself later so just <clears throat> go in there like this either I don't know if I can pull them out so I'm just gonna clip them off like so and then hammer them back it's better to use a hammer but 
it is hardened tool steel, so it should be okay. So what that is, is that's where they tried to staple the wood together or something like that, and they missed. And instead of pulling it out to redo it, they just left it. So <clears throat> you won't necessarily want to pull them out. You almost, it'd almost be better off in this case to clip them. So anyway, just thought I'd put that little side note in there. There it is. Long now. Start kind of seeing the inside of how <clears throat> a lot of these couches and stuff are made now, which is uh, kind of sad. But I'm um, pulling these along. I've been at it about 10 minutes with all things in furniture. It takes patience and time. Um, but if you do get to one, I've got a staple. You can't even see it in the video because it is buried so far. It's right there. <clears throat> if, uh, if you do get the one you can't get to, um, there is a solution. You want to take a razor blade right here. And you're going to run it right along the right side of the staple. And you're just going to cut it nice and easy. Just a little tiny slit, and then you should be able to pull this right clean of it real easy without making too big of a hole in your fabric. See, I just took a little bit out. <clears throat> and there's the hole, and we'll just position it on a different spot later. So I think I'm going to leave it just like this for now so I can see where my damage is. Um, give you a perfect example why you don't want to have loose nails if you look right there that is someone's loose staple that they didn't hammer all the way in and this rubbed up against the wall at some point and now it's gone through the fabric so it's on the back side thank god but the point is is don't keep loose staples around so <clears throat> so at first glance this couch looks fine there's no broken wood or anything but then, you go up here and you look and you see, oh, that looks kind of loose. Let me see if it moves. Oh, yep, yeah, it moves. So, oh, where, where is it? I don't know if you can see that in the video very well. Let me try it from here. See how much movement that has along that board? <clears throat> what that means is that the cheap staple job they did hence so they can get some light in there all right grabbed a flashlight so cheap staple job they did it pulled out instead of fastening it with screws or something that's more stable so now if i wanted to this thing moves see so when someone actually puts weight on it, I mean, I'm just using my thumb. When someone actually puts weight on that, the whole thing sags down. And it makes a horrible noise, which will eventually break the boards. So what we're going to do to fix it is I'm going to cut all those nails loose. As you can see, it's already starting to crack this board up here. Right here. We're going to cut all these nails loose. And we're going to screw it through to the side into this vertical member. So it's this particle board has the cloth directly attached to it we're gonna screw into the solid wood here and go from there so just so you know it looks like they're all that way they're just loose so we're gonna go ahead and get that ready I'm gonna come in here with these Bikes and just clip these nails back. I've usually only one or two where they're staples, either way. We want to get them either flat or clipped back. So that way we can grab a clamp and press this down. We're going to want this nice and square when we screw it in. Alright, now this one's got a bunch of screw nails in it. You are going to want to pick these up, obviously. 
I don't recommend pushing them back through if you can help it because you'll put a hole in the fabric like I showed you earlier. Maybe not. You might get away with it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Just cut them loose. They cut pretty easy. If yours is actually screwed, you may need a fine tool or a Dremel or something along those lines to get it loose. But if it was actually screwed, I wouldn't expect it to be loose like this either, unless the wood is broken, which at that case you will have to fix. Now, as you see, you watched it drop down once I clipped that. Um, so this was likely not ever quite right, but we're going to get it squared out and that we don't have any more issues. So I'm going to go grab some clamps and some screws. All right, so I grabbed some T50 staples. I'm using a half inch deep staples. That's to put the felt back on. And I also grabbed an assortment of screws because I have not measured up. Um, Drywall screws will work in this case. They will be inside, so they won't. But uh, I prefer to use something that's like a construction screw, screw something that won't ever rust. Um, so we're going to take this level here and I'm going to do a quick measurement with it. And it looks like we are just under two inches in total width between that board and that board. So, and this one, there we go, autofocus. This one's just over three quarter. So, obviously that means that the five eighths is out and three quarters out. So, I could use a one inch. It's not quite as much as I want. So I'm gonna go with these one and a quarter screws. They're longer and we'll get more pull with them. But before we do that, I am gonna go grab some wood glue because I want this to be permanent and that wood glue will help keep the stress off the screw joint. And then we're gonna square this up with the upper, I guess the vertical member. And that way we have a nice square connection. So I've got these quick, cramp, quick clamps right here. I'm gonna start with this one. use the other member on there as a clamp point. Looks like it's not reaching though. It may have to find another one. I don't want to have to get out the big bar clamps, so I'm going to daisy chain my clamps. If you've never seen that done, it's interesting. So to daisy chain clamps, you're going to take one clamp and you hook it to another one. What this does, it gives you a little bit extra length, not a lot, but a little bit, just like that. So now you can see I've extended it from there to there instead of to there. I don't recommend doing this, but the only other clamp I have is a six foot bar clamp and it will not fit properly in this couch. So this is what I have to do this time around and it'll get the job done for now. So I'm gonna go set this up inside the couch here. All right, so I know the lighting's horrible, but here, you can kind of see what I did there. I've got one clamp hooked to the other. I'm using one clamp lever right here to tighten it up, to lengthen up my clamp space. And right now I'm gonna see if it's square. clamps are in the way so I'm going to reclamp it real quick on the other side of the wood. Alright so the shadows make it hard for you to see but we are definitely not square right now. So I'm going to wax it up a little bit. And it looks like to square it up I 
actually push it back just a tad. So, and I think that's gonna have to do. So they weren't too far off a square when they started. They weren't too far off a square when they started, but. That'll be that. All right, so now what we wanna do, we wanna get some wood glue. We're gonna put it in behind here and up here. And then I'm gonna take this clamp right here clamp this up right there so here's me clamping you want to use a rubberized clamp like these are wing clamps for this because you don't want to damage your fabric so we're gonna check and make sure that we are still square up here and then after that and it looks Looks like we are pretty close to square. It's a little off, but for this it won't make a difference. And after that, we're gonna start screwing in and gluing. Okay, so if there's anything I want you to learn here is that this wood is cheap on pretty much all furniture now that isn't really high end and you need to pre-drill it so I'm gonna put two screws in here and pre-drill both holes if you don't pre-drill it there's a high possibility that you're gonna crack it now I recommend doing exactly what I did first, which is glue this together. Um, I couldn't record it, just get some wood glue and put it in there. And uh, cell phone was giving me some problems during that. So, anyway, um, once you have it glued, make sure you reclamp it real good, right where you want it. Make sure it's square. You'll have some time. The wood glue takes a minute to dry. Then pre drill it, leave it clamped. The reason I recommend pre drilling after you glue is because if you try to pre-drill it and then you move everything to glue your your drill lines won't line up between the two boards so pre-drill so you don't split your wood and we'll go from there all right I have put a spot of wood glue in there screwed that one and that one and with any luck we won't have any more squeaking noises. Even though it looks like most of this thing was put together with staples. Um, so at this point, all we're going to do is grab our handy dandy staple gun and start popping them on. Well, at this point, it's real simple. You're just going to... This is usually creased over like this. It's got folds in it. So just fold it back over. That helps give it a little extra to grab onto with the staple. Make sure it's nice and tight so it looks good. And just hit it. Just like that. 